Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Secret Base figure preview video. Before we begin, I want to say a massive thank you to Ryan Kirkwood for going out in person and snapping these gorgeous high-res pictures. Show Ryan some love in the comments below because without him, this series literally wouldn't be possible. If you are looking to pre-order your very own Feral Predator, I have popped the link to Pop Collectibles in the description below. As always, do your own research, make sure you are comfortable before buying. I've also included the discount code Justin's Collection for 5% off your order if you do decide to buy from them. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new figure preview video goes live on the channel. Now, we all know that Hot Toys have this rep of teasing stuff at conventions and on their Facebook page and then just doing nothing with it and never actually delivering on those prototypes. I'm not sure that Hot Toys know they have that reputation because they still continue to tease us and they still continue to not release all of the figures they show us, which drives collectors crazy. But I'm glad that Feral Predator is not one of those figures that they just teased at a convention then left in their back room never to be made. I had the pleasure of seeing the first prototype for this guy in person and I was blown away. They have made some significant changes to Feral Predator since that first prototype that we will be discussing in just a second. I'm fairly certain this stuff wasn't shown at ACGHK, although I could totally be wrong on that. My memory is a little bit fuzzy. I do like the sculpt work and the washes in the crevices. This though is new. Now we know you can remove his bio mask. And he's got these very piercing yellow eyes. Plus the interchangeable mandibles. Now I'm not sure if, like the previous Hot Toys Predators, you can mix and match the mandibles. So on one side you can have it flared out and the other side closed, which just makes for some more interesting looking expressions for Predator. We'll just have to wait and see when this guy releases, but how they have this piece displayed here at Secret Base, it looks like it's one solid unit. So maybe no when it comes to mixing and matching. It's a little too early to tell still, that's just my first impression based on what's on display. His hands right now are looking pretty rough, especially that open palm hand with the massive seam line going across the top. It looks like they've resin 3D printed the hands and there was a touch of a layer slipping, so don't freak out, for final production I'm sure they will tighten up the tolerances, there won't be seam lines everywhere. Their skin texture looking reptilian enough to be a predator, and there's this subtle sheen on the surface. Not too much that he looks slick and wet as though he's been doused in water, just enough to show that there's some moisture on the skin, like I said, reptilian. I actually really enjoyed this fresh take on the plasma caster for prey. Instead of going with the traditionally shoulder mounted energy weapon, this time it's handheld and it shoots arrows. It's still connected to the targeting system on the bio mask, so it's still that iconic predator style weapon. It's just something a little bit different, and I particularly like that Naru uses this weapon to actually kill the Predator. It's one of his own arrows that leads to his demise. The detail here is superb. There's sharp sculpt work, washes in the crevices, metallic paints where they need to be, and you have multiple different arrows. So if you wanted to have one lodged in him somewhere perhaps, or just scattered around the display base as some set dressing, totally doable. I am hoping though that they aren't made of that brittle plastic. I would like for the arrows to be a little bit sturdier. Look, I like LEDs as much as the next guy. When you turn them on you have a big kid moment. They're fun, they're cool, but they're just a gimmick. I would have preferred if the targeting system was a swap out piece that was fully painted in red so you could have had it on or off permanently. That way you're not relying on LEDs that will eventually be burnt out, or cables that will eventually stop working, or power sources that will die on you. Maybe in the future Hot Toys, LEDs aren't always necessary. If you're doing an LED option, I would also like to see a painted version. That way you can display it one way or the other, because people usually don't display their figures lit up all the time. Now the display base is new for this particular figure. We have not seen this display base before. 
You have a couple of bits and pieces with arrows lodged in the back there, and you have a log on one side. It looks realistic enough. There's a lot of texture on the surface. I am curious to find out, though, if these pieces are removable or adjustable in any way, like that hatchet, for example. Can you remove it, or is that fixed in position? Because the hatchet does stick out pretty far past the edge of the display base. So say, for instance, you want to have it somewhere else on the base and save on width in the cabinet. You don't have enough room to accommodate the massive width of this base with the hatchet sticking out of it. Then I would like to be able to remove it if possible. We'll just have to wait and see when this guy releases. Just like with the hands, the rest of him is kind of slick looking and very nasty. Particularly his big glossy black toenails. They look absolutely disgusting. He's got these massive bulbous toes and a split cut boot slash ankle guard design. Don't exactly know what to call what he's wearing there. Leg warmers, perhaps? They're just really big socks. And they are a split cut design, so you can get maximum range of motion out of the ankles. I would have liked to have seen the bit that flares out look a little bit tighter. Just bring it in a touch because it does flare out quite significantly over his foot. And it's a dead giveaway that this is a split cut design. The paintwork though is solid all round. He's glossy, like I've said three times at this point. The skin texture is very deep and craggly. So even at a distance or for figure photography, there is enough definition there that I think it's still going to stand out. I don't think it's going to get drowned out, like I said, standing back at a distance. Now you can see that his skin is cracking above his knee. Don't worry, that's just the prototype. That is going to be a solid plastic joint. Which does mean you will have visible knee joints. You can see it just there on his left knee poking out above the craggly sculpted skin. There's no two ways around that. I mean, if you have exposed joints at the knees, you're going to see the channel around the front. If you bend it past, say, 35 to 40 degrees, if you leave it unbent, then he's going to look a touch more seamless. You will still see the cap going over the knee area, but it will look better than if you bend his knees too far. We all know what exposed knee joints and elbow joints look like at this point by Hot Toys. It's no surprise. This is a very difficult body mold to get right, and they went with exposed joints. I have no complaints about that. If this was a more human type character, then yes, I would, because normal skin, that's a lot easier to do seamless. This kind of detail, with the dots and the speckling and the shading and the scars and the musculature, doing it in silicon might have been just too much of a challenge for Hot Toys. Maybe in a couple of years when we eventually get 2.0 versions of Predators, then they can experiment with going seamless. Right now, I'm okay with the way this guy looks. He does have some trophies on his belt, which are a nice touch, and they've got this really rich warm tone to them, so it does look like aged bone. That has been cleaned, of course, a little bit shiny. His belt slash sash slash loincloth thing with a little bit of armor plating on it, is made of rubbery plastic, which I'm not a massive fan of. Yes, the armor pieces can be rubbery plastic, but the fabric stuff that's supposed to be under it? Why is that not real fabric? We've seen them do it before with Predators, and it's looked very convincing. This time round, they've gone fully sculpted, which means bringing his legs forward, they will collide with the bits and pieces that were supposed to be fabric, so he will be slightly more restricted. And there's now a risk of paint rub, so you will have to be a touch more careful. I do find it odd that they are really embracing exposed joints. That cut across the torso is just really, really visible. Even with their most recent Predator release being Wolf Predator, and then City Hunter and Classic, they just had fully sculpted torsos with no mid-torso articulation. So like I said, it's just interesting that they're embracing exposed joints. It's not necessarily a good or a bad thing for Predator because you do want that blend of realism, detail, and maximum range of motion, especially for Feral Predator because he was super dynamic. We'll just have to wait and see if they tighten anything up or change anything when this guy goes into production. This is a prime example of something that needs some changing, tweaking, and tightening. It's his elbow joint. I'm not sure exactly why they can't, at the very least, print some skin texture on that joint. I'm not saying we have to sculpt on it, 
or paint it, although they could totally do that. Just fake it. Just print some detail there. It'll be a micro thin layer and it shouldn't get scratched if the tolerances are well done enough so that nothing is rubbing, which you'd expect it not to anyway from Hot Toys, especially at this price point. So maybe going forward, they can print some detail on there. Then it won't stand out as much as it does right here. It is a massive eyesore. He does have his wrist blades fully extended and he's holding his combi stick. So yes, if you're wondering, he does come with it. I do, however, really appreciate the super tight gap between the hand and the forearm, so there's pretty much no wrist peg visible. However the hell they've done that, I do hope that there's enough range of motion to get this guy in some sword slash combi stick wielding poses. You can see his dreads coming over his shoulder, and we will talk about the dreads in just a second. He does have his shield on, and as you can see here on display, it's attached with blue tack. So all of those things combined, the fact that the joints look rough, there are some cracked sections, there are seam lines visible, and they're using blue tack, that just tells me that this guy is a very, very early prototype. Just like how Inart does it when they show their figures early on and then you see the changes and progressions, I would like to see Hot Toys show us that as well. Show us some updates, give us some information as to how everything is going. Not just show us this held together with blue tack, and then we have to wait two years for final production and just hope for the best. Couple of updates along the way wouldn't go astray, Hot Toys. Please, just think about doing that. The shield, this is the fully exposed slash expanded version. It looks great. No complaints with the way that looks. Same thing with the head sculpt. They've got the fully wide open mandibles on here, and this dude is one ugly looking figure, but that is exactly what I was after for this particular version of a Predator. And the gap between the mandibles where they plug in on the side of the head sculpt and the mandibles themselves isn't super noticeable around the side. It is, however, noticeable on the inside of the mouth. This has been an issue that's plagued Hot Toys Predators forever. You can see it right there in the crevice, this massive seam line going down the front. I think that they could have done away with that at this point. Hot Toys, it's been a while since your last Predator. Surely you could have figured out how to do away with those seams. Or even if you can't do away with them, just blend them in better. You can curve the seams. They don't have to be just a straight cut up and down Hot Toys. There is no rule book when it comes to making 1-6 scale figures. You can experiment with it, do stuff the non-traditional way. So instead of going with a straight cut, they could have curved it inside the mouth because you can see there are some curved bits and pieces. That way it would have blended in perfectly. At least the bio mask looks absolutely gorgeous. And they've hit the inside crevices with this almost neon red wash so it looks like it's glowing even though it isn't. That's what I want from the targeting array. Just swap out piece that's painted with that exact same red, that neon color. So it looks like it's lit up when it doesn't actually have to be. You don't have to rely on the LEDs. They've done this effect so well. Seriously, I would love to see them using this style of paint process going forward with future figures. Like, say, for instance, an Iron Man release. Imagine a swap out arc reactor, one that's clear and one that's painted like this, so it looks like it's glowing all the time in the collection. We can only dream, hopefully one day. Now the bio mask does have a good blend between the organic and the mechanical. You can see the targeting system, which of course lights up, and you can see these metal brackets working their way up to the top of the bio mask. Now the dreads are interesting. He also has his med kit on his back, and you can holster his uh, bow and arrow slash handheld cannon thing. I thought they were going to go individual strands for the dreads. There are some individual rubbery pieces, but most of them are mass sculpting. I guess they wanted to find a way to more easily manage the dreads. Imagine, though, if they were all individual and they just draped perfectly. I get it, they wanted to give them flow and make them look more dynamic, sort of springing out from the scalp or the top of his head, so it looks like he is moving around when you put him in a dynamic pose. Still, I think that they could have gotten away with just making them individual pieces rather than being this one big clump of rubbery plastic. It still looks good, I'm not complaining, I just want to point out that there are other ways of doing things. You don't always have to do it the same way that you've done it in the past, Hot Toys. Just experiment with it, try something new, 
and try and innovate wherever possible. Now, I am still so freaking excited to get this guy and so happy that Hot Toys are making Predators again. It seems they forgot that back in the day with their Predator model kits, we use that term very loosely, those are what put Hot Toys on the map. And this is a return to form for Hot Toys. Great sculpting, great detail, a ton of accessories and a lot of presents. Now, I have popped the link to Pop Collectibles in the description below if you would like to pre-order your very own copy of Feral Predator. As always, do your own research, make sure you are comfortable before buying. I've also included the discount code Justin's Collection for 5% off your order if you do decide to buy from them. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment and subscribe, we'll catch you in the next video.